Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. With the current situation in Ukraine, where Russia is threatening to invade the country, we might remember another historical example where Russia intervened militarily in one of the former Soviet republics. In August 2008, a war broke out between Georgian government forces and the forces of South Ossetia. Russian forces immediately got involved on the side of South Ossetia and launched an open military campaign against Georgia. The definition of South Ossetia depends on the side you belong to. To most countries of the world, it's an integral part of Republic of Georgia. To Russia and a handful of its closest allies, it's an independent nation, just like Abkhazia in the northwest. South Ossetia is located in the Caucasus region. It has just under 4,000 square kilometers and official population is just over 50,000. Ossetians are a separate ethnic group. North Ossetia also exists and it's a part of Russian Federation. Georgia often officially refers to South Ossetia as Tsinvali region, after the largest town in it. During the Soviet years, South Ossetia was formed as an autonomous province within the Soviet Republic of Georgia. When the Soviet Union began to break up and Georgia started to show intentions of gaining independence, South Ossetians declared their full sovereignty but still within the Soviet Union which existed at the time. Georgian forces attempted to establish control of its region in 1991-92, but eventually failed. Throughout the 1990s, Georgia's military forces remained weak, but this started to change after 2000. Military spending was greatly increased and a lot of equipment was purchased. Mostly it was former Soviet weapons bought from former Soviet republics or Warsaw Pact members. Georgian military eventually became a lot more powerful than the military forces of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. This was especially true for the latter. Just before the conflict of 2008, South Ossetia relied mostly on lightly equipped militia forces with only a handful of outdated T-55 tanks and some artillery at their disposal. In case of an open conflict, South Ossetia depended on Russia for its defense. First clashes between two sides happened in early August 2008, and just before midnight of August 7th, Georgian forces launched an offensive against the forces of South Ossetia. Russians immediately sent their ground forces south to the Rocky Tunnel and began flying aircraft sorties under the pretext of supporting Russian peacekeeping forces in the region. This soon grew into a full-scale war between Russia and Georgia. If you're a DCS world player, you will recognize some of the locations mentioned here. Unlike most reenactments on this channel, this one takes place on actual geographic locations. The first Russian loss occurred in late afternoon of 8th August. Lieutenant Colonel Terebunsky of 368th Attack Aviation Regiment, a veteran of both Chechen wars, was flying his Suhoi 25BM and attacking some columns between Java and Tsinvali. But then, it seemed that South Ossetian irregulars launched several manned pad missiles at him, and he had to eject.
Да? Although they were still shooting at him while he was descending, he managed to land and identify himself, and he was taken to Russian forces. Russian television filmed this aircraft crashing, and they actually reported that a Georgian airplane was downed. Apparently, neither the South Ossetian irregulars nor the Russian troops in the area were informed that Russian Air Force was active. And with Georgian Air Force Suhoi 25s having attacked a Russian army column in the morning, Terebunsky's airplane was believed to be Georgian and mistakenly shot down. The second shootdown was credited to Georgian anti-aircraft defense. A Russian Tupolev 22 M3 of the 52nd Guards Heavy Bomber Aviation Regiment was hit over the village of Karbaoli in Georgia on the early morning of August the 9th. First reports suggested that the aircraft was on a reconnaissance mission, but it had actually attacked the Georgian infantry base. A group of 222s were returning to Russia from their mission, following the same path as on their way in. Unofficial sources say that they dropped from their usual altitude of 12,000 meters to 4,000 meters for unknown reasons. One of them was hit either by a Georgian OSA SA-8 or by a Buk SA-11 SAM system. co-pilot Major Malkov ejected first. He was injured on landing and captured by Georgian troops. He was eventually exchanged for Georgian prisoners after the war. The airplane commander, Lieutenant Colonel Kovensov, also ejected but disappeared. His body was found later, just like the crash site of 222 with the remaining two crew members. The next loss is the first one not officially admitted by Russia. However, there were many witnesses and video footage is available. On the morning of 9 August, three Su-24Ms from 929th State Test Center were attacking Georgian artillery positions between Gori and Skinvali. After the first run, one of them was hit by a man-pad missile. Polish media reported that a Polish-made Grom-2 system which is based on Russian Igla was used here. The missile caused a major fire and the crew ejected. The airplane commander, Colonel Zeno, was seriously injured and captured. He was later exchanged, just like Major Malkov. The Sohoi 24 crashed in the village of Zerevi and the wreckage was shown on Georgian TV that day.
fourth Russian aircraft was shot down just minutes after the third. Commanding officer of the 368th Attack Aviation Regiment, Colonel Sergei Kobilash, was leading a pair of Su-25s. They were attacking a Georgian supply column moving along the Gordits Hinvali Road. After either his first or third pass, depending on the source, his Su-25 was hit by a man-pad missile. Colonel Kobilash aborted his attack and turned north, trying to return to base. However, as he reached the southern edge of Tsin Valley, he was hit again by another man pad missile. Now he had no trust left and he ejected north of the town. Kobilash was rescued by a combat search and rescue Mi-8 escorted by a Mi-24. It is not perfectly clear who fired the second missile. There were no Georgian troops in Tsinvali at the time, but they were positioned in nearby villages. But the clue we have is that South Ossetians announced they had shot down one of two Georgian aircraft that were on the way to bomb Tsinvali. So the cause of this loss is almost certainly another case of friendly fire. This was part 1 of the video about Russian aircraft losses in the Georgian War of 2008. Part 2 is coming soon. If you liked the video, be sure to press the like button. Support the channel on Patreon if you are able to, subscribe if you haven't already, and keep watching Showtime 112.